So today we have Manish Dayal sitting down with us to discuss the upcoming season of his medical drama, The Resident, where he plays Dr. Devin Pravesh. The Resident offers a look into some of the deeper issues in the medical system, and this season is unique in television because it's set after the pandemic. Your character, Dr. Pravesh, also has some really devastating consequences in the aftermath of COVID-19. We're really happy to have you here with us to discuss this. How are you? I'm well, and I first just want to say I really appreciate the way you pronounced his name correctly. <laughs> yeah, the Esh always like, it's insane. That means a lot. But <laughs> <laughs> of course. So we're really excited about your character's dramatic journey this season. Can you tell us more about what's in store for Dr. Pravesh? Sure. Um, you know, Devin uh, experiences a loss in the first episode, and I think that warts him to completely new territory, places we have not seen him go yet first four seasons of the show, um, and it revolves around the pandemic and coronavirus. Uh, first season loses, dies of COVID-19, and then not just that, but also um, in the care of a public hospital, which illustrates the disparity between um, uh, underfunded brown and black communities versus those that are well-funded in um, uh, privatized hospitals. So we sort of talk about the differences there, and we also discuss um, how how that impacts him as a doctor himself. He's working at a private hospital. Um, where does he find his responsibility? What role did he ultimately play? Um, how could we have helped? And I think the end of episode one, you'll see all of these emotions and um, in the in, in the story come to a place where he realizes uh, the real loss and the the trauma of what he. Uh, experience in the first episode and from then and you know, from there we go to episode two three four and five in the first batch of episodes where we'll see him reel from reeling from that loss and 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 his position and him wavering back and forth you know and deviating from who he really is and finding his way back and i think that's what makes the uh, storyline really riveting and interesting and also um, honors healthcare workers who are experiencing the same thing and individuals in this country and around this globe who've lost a loved one. So I'm hoping that we can illustrate that and uh, bring some authenticity to it. Um, yeah, that sounds like it'll be really important for viewers to watch. And it is because we're, we're, we're talking about the pandemic. Ultimately, that's what we all want to talk about. That's what the world is experiencing right now. It's our, it's, it's what's uniting the globe right now because we're all experiencing this together. Um, but within that, there are there are other conversations to be had, like the the level of care, the disparity of care. I think that's important that um, we touch on those uh, on those issues. Yeah, definitely. I think the resident showcases many of the healthcare's systemic issues, and this has become like very much on the forefront of people's minds during COVID-19 when we've seen kind of all of that exposed. So it's great to hear you talk a bit more on that as well. Oh, no. um, and Dr. Pravesh's character arc stems from losing his father to COVID-19, as we saw in the first episode. How did you prepare to act such a heartbreaking tragedy that might hit home for a lot of viewers? You know, wow. Um, I don't want to say it was simple because it, it, it's not. Uh, I had to do my best and try to um, put myself in that scenario. And my process is always to sort of um, try to to try to do that in any sort of uh, scenario that I'm portraying. Uh, and in this case, you know, I thought about individuals I know who have lost people and what that might feel like. And also um, the uniqueness of it, because um, Devin's dad dies alone in a hospital and nobody is around him except just a screen that he's um, zooming uh, on. And <clears throat> that's super tragic. And to me, that is one of the most um, unfair things about this entire experience is that people who are suffering are doing so alone. And the idea <clears throat> uh, that, that Devin couldn't be there with his dad, protect him hold his hand and uh, ultimately care for him in those final hours and, and days, I think is one of the most tragic things about the story. And to me, I was really trying to illustrate that in, um, in that final scene on the plane of what that might feel like for someone. Yeah, that was very heartbreaking to watch. 
And then The Resident is really unique because it's set in a post-pandemic world. What was it like to film in that landscape and then come back out to the reality of the pandemic? Um, well, first we wanted, we hope to give people some hope and do so in a very personal way. I think that's one thing The Resident does well. And that's one thing that uh, among many that res The Resident does so well. Uh, we like to tell stories um, in a very personal and um, empathetic way so to actually physically shoot during the pandemic of course you know it has its challenges you know we're wearing ppe all the time and being on set and taking care of each other and making sure everyone stays healthy and then um of course trying to jump forward in time and talk about two things one carry on uh what what happens to the hospital after the pandemic and two how does it change the doctors how are the doctors going to be different people how are they going to uh, practice medicine now going forward because i think the coronavirus and this pandemic has changed medicine and will will i don't know um garner new territory that we've never seen before everyone's experiencing it for the first time and we do want to honor frontline workers and healthcare workers who are on the front line and just say how grateful we are to you because without you we wouldn't be here we wouldn't be back at work uh, the world would be at a standstill so um we want to honor all of those things as well absolutely that's really great that you guys are doing that with like shows set in the future or movies set in the future there's sometimes details that they get wrong in terms of when the future is actually revealed was that a concern for you guys of course because nobody knows the outcome of the vaccine and nobody knows how that's going to change um, behavior and how we interact with each other. Even if we're all vaccinated, what does that really mean? Are we always going? Are we just going to just, you know, go back to our default settings? I don't know. You know, I think that that <clears throat> is yet to be explored and understood. Um, we know that our society and our world is changing very rapidly, and um, post vaccine. Um, we still have yet the verdict is out on how we're going to really behave as a society still. And I think that what we did on the resident was integrate it, but also not um, keep, we didn't continuously revisit it in every episode. We tried to move forward and bring hope and, um, and expand out and try to um, tell new stories after the pandemic. And I think that how we are looking to the future. Yeah, you seem to be very passionate about like the issues in the healthcare system. And I'm guessing a lot of that may stem from your work on The Resident. How have what you have learned in The Resident impacted your daily life? Um, in a huge way. Uh, and a lot of those interests came from the show because the show has taught me uh, a lot about medicine. Also, I have several doctors in my family that have been able to um, really educate me and and uh, illustrate what what medicine really is all about and how a hierarchical it can be and I think that that is something that um, it, that it's something that I think the show um, depicts uh, because I think it's important to know that the level of care is so different based on what hospital you're in or what region you, you're living in um, and we have to, we have to either decide for ourselves whether we think that that is fair or that is right. Personally, um, not. I think that we all deserve the same level of care, regardless of where you're from or who you are. And um, that's my personal belief. And it's founded on things that I learned on the show, things that I've witnessed in my own life, and um, and the people who have helped me, um, who've taught me and helped me grow. I think showing those on screen, those disparities on screen, is really important because, at least for me, I've heard about a lot of those during the pandemic, but seeing it played out with real people, real actors playing real people and just seeing that like human humanity aspect added to it is really important. You've played multiple characters before that are very passionate and dedicated to their work. Mm -hmm. How does that change from a TV show where you're coming back again and again over multiple years and there's a lot of character growth versus in a movie where you're just focused on this one thing for a couple months? Mm -hmm. uh, how are the differences? What do you bring to each character when you're keeping that in mind? I think that's a great question. Um, 
I think about that a lot, actually, because, you know, you want to reinvent um, your character and you want to have new new things to mine, uh, new territory to explore. And to me, it's not unbelievable that a character that you're going to be playing for multiple years doesn't have that opportunity because I believe, like many of us, that we're constantly evolving as people. As we evolve as a society and as a culture and a group, we're also evolving as individuals. So Devin in season one is a very different character than season four. Devin. And I can say that for all the characters on our show. Uh, with my and for that reason, it allows me to explore new things all the time. And that's something that, um, that I think is important to note. And, and you know, of course, like a film, you are very clear of your character's arc from the beginning. You go in there, you shoot it, and you have the whole piece right then and there. Um, and what happens after is is not necessarily your uh, needs to be in your point of view while you're shooting it. So they're different in that, like um, for Devin, every day I'm thinking about his future and what's gonna, how is this choice in this episode going to impact um, his choices later. And his relationship with Conrad, for example, how has that evolved, and how has that become a, from a mentee mentor to a to uh, you know a adversarial to uh, friendship and a, a very very close friendship now? And I think that that evolution is really interesting to explore. And you don't necessarily have that opportunity in a film, and to do that over the course of four years, so they both have their um, unique traits and advantages that I've been so lucky and fortunate to. Um, to explore. You've had a very yeah. versatile career from fun roles like The Holiday, serious shows like The Resident and serious roles on fun shows like Raj and 90210. Do you, uh. have, <laughs> do you have a favorite past project or favorite performer slash director you've worked with? Um, God, I just, yeah, I for so many different reasons, I, I appreciate every project. Um, but each one has helped shape me in a, in a new way. Um, I think Underfoot Journey still is one of the most amazing um, filming experiences I've had. It's, it was it was a crash course, but it was also um, this incredible opportunity that I got to um, learn learn from. And Lasse Hallstrom, our director, uh, it was wild to see him work and to understand his process. And that was new and, and very uncharted territory that I got to sort of uh, witness. Uh, 90210 is an interesting one because to me, I was playing just a regular old guy. Um, you know, there was no sort of uh, ethnic obligation or affiliation to that character. And I didn't realize the value of it until later. And I didn't realize that that actually means something much larger than I understood at the time uh, to just play an Indian character living in Venice. I think that's unique and um, was new at the time. And he, uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Also, he was terminally ill. So that was another thing I got to explore, like what, what that was like. So I think each, um, each role has uh, taught me something new and provided a new sort of landscape for me. The resident, of course, specifically you know, the, the, the world of medicine and, and understanding the system and, and the hierarchy of it all and just drawing back the curtains of it um, was was interesting. And understanding that doctors are human beings. They're not God. Like to, to think of your doctor as a God or somebody who's incapable of mistakes is wrong. You know, I think that's something that we all need to know that, um, that uh, about physicians. And so I think that, yeah, so each role has been cool in its own way. You know, it's taught me something different. Great. Um, what inspired you to pursue acting? Wow. Well, uh, a couple things, actually. You know, I, I, you know, I like many of my peers, uh, you know, got struck by what it was like to be represented and reflected on screen. And to see that for the first time was a pretty magnetic experience to understand uh, and to, to see yourself portrayed on screen or to see something that you belong to um, reflected. And a lot of people who, a lot of people who are underrepresented on TV often have this experience uh, when they 
felt that connection and how they could be a part of it and what they could do to portray stories in their own stories, stories that they're in control of. And to me, that was uh, my initial uh, um, spark, if you will, um, because oftentimes we'd seen something so, so, um, so one note on TV for so many years, even as kids and we were watching even cartoons, so on and so forth. And to see that change and to see how you can be part of that change and how you can affect uh, generations after you is a pretty, um, pretty powerful moment in anyone's life. And so for me, that was, that was that. That's really inspiring. I think you touched on this with Raj, just being a South Asian character that's a person and that not being the forefront or even like a huge component of who he was. Mm -hmm. A lot of changes regarding that in the entertainment industry right now and a lot of changes in general. Are there any changes happening that you're really excited about? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I definitely, to see um, characters that are steeped in any sort of history um, being represented by different ethnicities and it not having to be um, played by the original ethnicity. Like you think about David Copperfield and Dev Patel and you think about roles like that. Like in order to really shift the narrative, that's how you do it. That's how you, you, you can, of course, create new content and create um, new territory for people to live in, but to literally flip the ethnicity of a character is genius. I think that 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 was that's super cool, and how we how we can really um, how we can keep things fluid, and um, that's what I love to see. Um, what's the second part of your question? I, I apologize. Yeah, that was that was it. What changes are oh, you excited about that are happening? I'm excited about seeing seeing that to to really see the. Um, to really see the flipping of a script, uh, the flipping of a script, you know, um, and I think we're starting to see it in, in new ways. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think that's something that I mean, it's hard enough to get to play roles that you actually represent, and then mm -hmm. now seeing, I feel like Hamilton was a big catalyst, and now Bridgerton. Right, Ham uh, exactly. In Bridgerton, yeah. I haven't seen Bridgerton, but I've heard about it, and I know that 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 they flipped this idea of, of what. Um, maybe royalty, how, how it's portrayed on screen and how um, people can be related, but also different ethnicities and it's forgivable. It's not like we're locked to any one idea. And that's what's dynamic. That's what makes storytelling worth it. And it makes it uh, dynamic and an interesting thing to do every day. You know, I often say that um, the one there was once a mis uh, misconception on diversity and representation that um, the definition of diversity in any sort of, cast or uh, ensembles about sort of peppering the environment with people of color or or marginalized communities but really that's not enough that actually isn't the definition of diversity or representation um the real true definition of that and, and how we can achieve it is by how those individuals are driving the story so that's what uh, we want to see we want to see people um of, of all different faiths and ethnicities and genders, whatever, that drive and influence the um, the purpose of the story and not just peppered in the margins. And I think that's the way forward and it's happening. Yeah, that's with Bridgerton, it's kind of like a rewriting of history where they say, oh, like the queen, the king married the, uh, the queen who was Af African descent and that spurred equality in the society. And there was a, um, a series that Netflix did earlier about Hollywood uh, I don't know if you saw that one, but it was a kind of similar thing where there was this rewriting of history. What do you think about that? Because it's not just replacing characters that are typically white with characters, mm -hmm. minority characters. That's, a good, but That's a good question. I know that people are going to want to ask that question. And, and here's my answer. Um, I believe our job is to be human beings. So to embody a character... If you're a human being and you're embodying the character, a character, I think that's your job. So, and I don't think it relies on your ethnicity. Um, I know that may change in certain environments, and people may disagree with that. But I believe that if I can breathe reality and authenticity into a character that was historically white, perhaps I should have that opportunity. Or if somebody else can do it, the uh, the idea is that. Um, 
it's about the soul and the essence of the character. And um, yeah, I mean, perhaps I might change my mind on that. I, I but right now that's kind of how I feel, and that's why I feel like uh, what you're saying, what Bridgerton is doing, and and what other uh, programs are doing. I think we'll see how audiences are responding. I think from what I can tell, um, audiences are responding well and people are thirsty for that kind of content and like really want um, to see new cutting edge dynamic casting and storytelling. I think that the world is asking for it. So maybe we're all on the same page. Yeah, it's so much more interesting that way. I totally agree. So we've yeah. discussed a lot of the exciting changes that are happening. Is there anything that you hope to see in the upcoming future in the entertainment industry? Hmm. You know, I think I'm always interested to see, like I said, uh, things kind of get flipped upside down. I like to, I like to see that story. Uh, I like to see stories like that, uh, particularly maybe, of course, I'm always going to say I want to see more South Asians on TV and in film. Uh, I think that we're relatively, you know, a new immigrant community in this country, uh, first generation. So for that, we still have a long way to go in terms of numbers and so on and so forth. But I think uh, we can begin to see uh, representation in many ways because we, as you know, uh, occupy so many different environments. Politics, uh, our vice president, uh, uh you know, uh, the world of entertainment, uh, musicians, so on and so forth. So I think that um, I'd like to see, of course, more of that. Yeah, that's great. And then going off of that, is there anything, shows or movies you've been loving recently? I just finished The Crown. Okay. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, really, really liked it. Uh, what else? The Crown. Um, crown is a great example i feel like yeah everyone it, has watched it everyone will relate yeah. to loving it it was good very good and then i know you have to leave soon but just to wrap up um what's something that you're looking forward to in 2021 <laughs> socializing <laughs> like going out and having fun yeah. uh in a safe way of course it's something that i'm really looking forward to seeing my family and my friends again and just hearing everyone's story and hearing what everyone's been up to and seeing the expressions on their face and, and all that stuff, sort of interacting with, um, yeah, my, my people. Awesome. I totally relate. That'll be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really great to talk to you and hear more about the resident and your career in general. Um, so thank you so much for sitting down. Thank you. Today. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. Yeah, of course. Bye. Bye.